The X Interview, hosted by Global X from the Skoll World Forum. My name is Sasha Chanoff. I'm the co-founder of Mapendo International, a humanitarian organization that rescues, protects, and cares for forgotten refugees in Africa whose lives are in danger and who do not have access to any assistance. The other co-founder is Dr. Wagacha Burton, who's a Kenyan national. Uh, and he and I launched this organization because we found a lot of refugees who had fled violence, ended up in refugee camps, and then actually were attacked and fled the camps. And once they flee those camps, they go off of everyone's radar screen. Our target population is widows, orphans, targets of genocide, rape victims, torture survivors, and others whose struggle to survive goes unnoticed and unattended. In 99 and 2000, uh, I was part of a US-funded rescue team that went into the Congo to evacuate Tutsis who were being massacred there. The violence was an extension of the Rwandan genocide. On our last rescue mission in, we arrived in a protection center to evacuate the Tutsis who had survived these massacres, and we found a family there that was not on our evacuation list. Uh, the list had been created from a previous evacuation mission. The woman that I saw there had been put in prison uh, 16 months earlier as a result of this violence. Innocent Tutsis were being exterminated. Her husband had been executed immediately and she had seven children with her in this prison that had turned into a death camp. Eight months, she realized she was pregnant and eight months later she gave birth to twins on this concrete prison floor. She said people were being executed around her and dying of malnutrition. These twins weighed four pounds each, and she said they had nothing. There was no food, there was very little water, and it was the most miserable, horrific conditions. She said she had to use a stick to cut the umbilical cords and a piece of hair to tie them off. She said the twins weighed about four pounds each. She managed to keep these twins and her seven other children alive for 16 months in this death camp while people died around them. And then uh, a sympathetic Congolese soldier helped them get into this protection center. Our three-person rescue team arrived in the center a few days later and had a list of people to take out and she was not on our list. When we radioed our headquarters and said we have an additional family to take out, we were given very explicit instructions, no, don't do it, you'll, you'll potentially sabotage the whole evacuation and all the other lives that you're trying to get out of there, leave them there and get everybody else out who's already been approved. So we had to make this kind of moral decision on the ground. Do we leave these people here, this woman and her nine children to die? Or do we potentially risk this whole evacuation and try to get them out? We decided we had to try and we did manage to get them out. We evacuated them to Cameroon, to a refugee camp there. And a few months later, they were resettled to the US. That woman's name was Rose Mapendo, and those two twins who almost died on a number of occasions through this evacuation are now seven years old. They're beautiful little kids. This experience was kind of a catalyst event for me that opened my eyes to the fact that there were refugees across Africa who were not on any lists, who had no access to aid and whose lives were in danger. And for that and a number of other experiences like that, I launched Mapendo International to rescue and protect refugees who are in danger and who don't have access to the existing aid system. Dr. Wagacha Burton is a Kenyan uh, doctor who's the co-founder of Mapendo along with me. So right now we run a rescue operations where we identify refugees in danger, then work with the UN and governments to get them out of danger. And we also launched a medical clinic in Nairobi where we address the urgent and critical medical problems of refugees who have fled violence and who have ended up in slum areas and who have no access to help and who have serious medical problems. You know, there are over 9 million refugees in the world and more than that many people who are internally displaced by conflict and hundreds of millions of people who remain in abject poverty directly as a result of war. I would love to see war end. How can you end war? It's quite complicated, but if citizens of the world take action and pressure our governments to get involved 
to get involved politically, to get involved with economic sanctions, and to get involved when it's needed um, with military interventions, you can start to look at solutions to end war. If you look at Sudan, for example, the Sudanese government came to the peace table with southern Sudanese rebels because the U.S. government put enough political pressure on the Sudanese government to do that. If there's enough political will, you can accomplish a lot of things, and that takes citizens and global action. Global X is also on Social Edge at socialedge.org.